uh, again, I'm going to just be uh, informal and hopefully we will laugh some. So we all know that this was taped in uh, February. And of course, uh, nobody but your own family knew the results. So how were you able to uh, hold a poker face and you know, live a normal life when everybody was very excited? So how, how was life in the last month and a half? I think I'm pretty good at keeping secrets and uh, yeah. <laughs> So did you get your friends kind of try to pressurize you to give away what happened? Well, one of the first things uh, when I came back is, because I was of course really excited because I knew that I had won, but nobody else did. I asked my roommates in my apartment how well they thought I did. Um, you know, one of my friends actually, he predicted that I got second because he said, you know, Nabir, you're really good, but I think there's that one guy out there who, <laughs> but that was good. At least he put you, he or she put you on the top, or top two. That was pretty good. Yeah. We, we tried to extract from your mom. She wouldn't budge. <laughs> good. So, but remember when you were interviewed by Carrie Lemon, I think it was last uh, Tuesday or so. Uh, they did not know, we did not know, but uh, you said if we, you win the $100,000, in your mind, you knew it was when. You said uh, you would buy a saxophone. So are you going to keep that promise? Um, I'm not sure. It's <laughs> I've not purchased anything. I've not even received the money yet. So, Do you have any idea how much a saxophone costs? Well, I think like it's only in the ballpark of what, like $1,000 probably, right? So there's <laughs> I think you should go ahead and buy it because the state of Minnesota may hold you on to that. You, you spoke that on live TV. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, uh, you may have to pay higher tax than your parents in the year 2020. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can come to Maida Club. <laughs> Uh, my, because I'm involved in band still in college, some of my I have some. And then after seeing that interview with Carol Levin, they offered to give me free saxophone lessons. <laughs> That's very good. Now I also think that uh, gods were behind you too. So remember, you had two questions. One was on Bhagavad Gita, and one was on that India Gate. So what was going through your mind when you saw those questions? Oh, same thing with the rest of the questions. Just try to answer quickly, right? <laughs> <laughs> but remember, you were pretty quick on the buzzer after the semifinal round. In the first round, you were a little slow. Was there anything to that? So the way we filmed the tournament is all the quarterfinal games were filmed in one day. And then the second day was the semifinals and finals. So these are two separate days. So the day of the quarterfinals, um, we had to be in the hotel lobby at 7 a.m. I didn't have time for breakfast. Plus my episode that we filmed, it was the Friday episode. So it was the last one of the day. And at that point I was just really tired. I think all of us contestants were, but uh, I don't think it helped me as much. Whereas the second day we had an extra hour to sleep and I had time for breakfast. So I think that kind of made a difference. It's the coffee, Nibir. It's the coffee. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't drink coffee, but. <laughs> no, but you are clearly a faster man on your hands, at least, uh, from the semifinal round onward. Yeah. yeah actually, so I was going to make fun of one of the questions that you had, that you were uh, asked. And I was going to make fun of our president, Donald Trump, I guess. You may have to send a thank you note to Donald Trump. You know why? I'll give you a clue and I'll let you finish this. So on your first round, remember, until the final jeopardy, you were behind. And then there was a question about something that Trump did, or uh, he says he did not do, but he saved you. Do you want to explain what was the question and what came out of that? So I guess the, the clue was that in September of 2019, this three-word Latin phrase, or searches for this three-word Latin phrase on merriamwebster.com increased by 5,500%.
<laughs> well, and then when I saw that clue, I immediately think September 2019, that's uh, when the Trump's phone call to the Ukrainian president was in the news. Quid pro quo was the answer to that Latin phrase. It's a good right. one. So that's what I meant. They may want to send a thank you note to Trump for doing something that he claims he didn't do, right? <laughs> <laughs> but we're surprised that, 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 that the other two, <laughs> other two friends of yours did not get that answer. Uh, it was very curious. I knew the answer right away. Tyler and Natalie, I guess you know. Sometimes it's hard with it to come up with the right answer, right? So I understand. Right, and that question saved you. And here we go now. <laughs> the rest is history. So. Fast forward to yesterday, you were, at the, you were at the same point now, final jeopardy, but now you are at, uh, at the other extreme. You already had the $100,000 in your bank, so to speak, and it didn't matter what you answered. It didn't matter what you bet. So we all know you got the question right. You wrote it down, then something happened. So tell us what happened once you got the question and once you started writing it. So this was already a joke that was pre-planned out. I was in our conversations on the first day of filming, um, Marshall Como, a contestant from the University of Texas, he came up with an idea that if any of us is either losing a game by a lot or winning a game by a lot, that as a joke answer, we should write down who the man. And then when Alex reads it out loud, then say, you the man, Alex. And so it's kind of like, I was the one that got to tell, it's like when someone else tells a joke and then someone else tells a joke, it's louder and everyone laughs. <laughs> so Alex um, did not know Marshall. about that, did he? Hmm? Did Alex know about the plan? No, so <laughs> Alex was not in on this, but <laughs> as you saw on TV, he reacted positively and it was, it was fun. And that was great because we know that you wrote the right answer, so you already made your point, but it was a great gesture of you to say the who the man. So we all enjoyed that. We all thought it was a great idea. Yeah. 2020? Yeah. But then, of course, the amount, yeah. So was that plan also? What are you going to bet the amount? I was really thinking about how much I should bet, not just because in, in the game, of course, I had already guaranteed to win, but I was thinking of what kind of significant numbers can I bet. Um, for fans of rap music, they saw on Thursday's episode, I bet 3,005. Um, it's a song <laughs> the rapper Childish Gambino, if you listen to it. Um, and I was thinking of other significant others. Actually, in the quarterfinal round, the very specific number that I bet to get the wild card spot, uh, I chose that number so that if I happen to get the question wrong, which of course, thankfully I got it right, but if I got it wrong, I would have ended with, up with $952, 952 being the area code for the Southwest Metro area. Oh. Nice, oh. good idea. Awesome. That was great. So now, I want you to make your mom cry. So tell us <laughs> from, your, from your childhood until college, what kind of support and charisma and, inspirations you got from your parents and maybe the rest of the Assembly's community of Minnesota? <laughs> I think there has always been sort of drive or um, a standard that um, is, I guess, a high standard that I've always wanted to achieve and that's been pushed by the community and by my <laughs> you know, keep on seeking out opportunities like this and to keep on um, trying something new. Well, you touched us all. You may or may not remember, you may or may not know that Athar actually has an idea that you should run for the president and uh, you'll be the, in the White House and we all will go to visit you. So what do you have to say to Athar? <laughs> <laughs> Great idea. Imagine that. I, I'm 19 years old. <laughs> 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 well, anyway, I know that all the younger generation of the Assemblies community will be looking now at a higher bar and you have raised a bar for all of us. So before I finish, I have a one last personal favor to say something on the screen. 
you may know that I live in Edina in a condo called Edina West Condominium. And we have 168 uh, condo units and I had I have been promoting you and all of us, all the residents were behind you for the last two weeks. So I want you to look at the camera and say again, remember Edina West Condominium. So thank everybody, all the residents of Edina West Condominium. Yes, thank you to all the residents of Edina West Condominium for supporting me and watching me on Jeopardy. There you go. So everybody.